Kelly and Joe. Hey. Welcome back to Evidence Based Families. This is our third episode. Yep. We are very happy to have you all watching us at home. Thank you for your patience. It has been stressful last couple weeks. Yeah, sorry for the delay. So, Ali and Joe back here again, tackling on a very interesting topic today expectations. Expectations. Yeah, we're going to do some research on married couples, but I think everything applies to every kind of couple. All relationships. So we're basically going to be so, talking about expectations and some strategies to be able to work around them and how to deal with them too. And as per usual, our four questions. Yeah. So thank you for the whole support you've given us for the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, thanks for the subscribes on the YouTube channel. Please go and subscribe. Um, keep if us. If you haven't already. Yeah, keep us building the fan base. Thanks for all the interaction we had with you and the people who have actually approached us and with whom we have talked. Um, it has very, it has been very helpful and interesting to get feed, feedback from you guys. So we keep on making this thing. So we're gonna keep on doing this for you and with you. Yes, hopefully with you. All right. So before we get down to to the topic and business and all serious. Um, let's talk a little bit about our highlight of the week. Highlight of the week. Our youngest, Avril, turned two the past weekend. Yeah. Well, the weekend before last weekend. Um, so we had a bit of a birthday party with her. We had two parties, one at the school and, and one at my yeah. mother-in-law's house. Yes, she had a lot of fun. Um, it was very pretty. Yeah, definitely. Um, small, but people who went had a very good time. I had to do my part as a kids animator slash clown. And um, it was really nice. It was very, very good environment, family environment. Yeah. Definitely. So that was uh, the highlight of our week. And, of course, tomorrow I'm going to watch Infinity War. So this is going to be epic. Sorry. It's an 11.50 p.m screening she's not doing that she's too sleepy so it's for the best there's not a chance i, I mean there's not a, there's she, not she a said chance it. in hell i'm gonna get it the best part is like you had to buy the ticket the ticket so you have to select your seat so there's like this huge group of people this huge group of people at a single seat right in the middle that's my seat my geeky husband yeah i'm happy tomorrow i'm gonna be happy oh, i know yeah i know all right, so that was our highlight of the week. Um, our official welcome to the terrible twos of our youngest. Promises yeah. a lot. Promises a lot. She's already a terrible two. Without being two, now she's two officially. So let's see what the future has for us in storage. <laughs> Promises a lot, yes. All right, so we're going to get... Expectations. On, <laughs> we're gonna get get our hands dirty in the topic now, um, with a bit of an introduction. Yeah. And I would like to introduce this topic, um, talking a little bit about expectations and an example about expectations in our marriage. Sad music begins. So I really just turned to as we just said, and. Thank God, and now we hear the organs and the hallelujah. She is finally sleeping the whole night. Well, she has been for several months, um, but it's like peace and quiet. I well, mean, we she sleeps the whole this. night if she sleeps here, because my mom hasn't been so lucky for the last couple of times. She hasn't, but 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 she's been she hasn't been so. Amelia was the one who played dirty last night. Well, time. it yeah. happened. Well. Shit happens, you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> anywho, so uh, in regards that uh, this is um, around this topic is in where one of the biggest expectations I had um, and one of the most problematic, unfulfilled expectations come along to play in our marriage. Um, I've breastfed Avery for about 16 months, I believe, and uh, at this point, at the, by the end, she was not really, you know, waking up because she was hungry, because she was already having proper meals during the day. She was uh, being breastfed during the day. It was not a nutrition issue. 
So it was pretty much more like a habit of waking up. And uh, we had made the agreement that one night it was going to be me with the baby when she woke up. And then the next time it was going to be the dear husband the next time. Only that when it was his turn and we had already set the night before. Okay, so tonight is your turn. He didn't wake up. Never. I always had to. Don't say never. Very few times. But I, few times. I did wake up and I went to her and I cradled her and I carried her and I let her cry and I did my thing. But most of the times, I would not wake up and go to the kid. True that. And then there came the frustration because I would have to wake up, make sure that you woke up, make sure again that you actually woke up. And that you actually dry, walked yourself out of the room into the baby um, to help her out. And that was very frustrating because by the time you had actually left the room, I was already wide awake. And I was like, this is just the same as if I was getting up myself with the baby, only that now I'm getting pissed. Am I awake? <laughs> I get it. Um, so that's a typical case of a non-fulfilled expectation. And yeah. if you ask me in the level of heightness of expectations, I wouldn't say that was so high, but there you go. The husband has a record for an unfulfilled expectations with the wife. So that became, that converted itself to... Frustration. Marital dissatisfaction. Oh, yeah. Because that, yeah. That's true. That's true. So, yeah, that's a very good example of what, a, what an expectation looks like, what it can do if it's not fulfilled. So she was disgruntled at her husband because her husband was a prick. Quite the jackass, that dude. Yeah. So, have you met him? Yeah. So that's yeah. what brings us to this topic. So we decided to do our own research. We found very good information, which we will be sharing with you right now. So now, what does the evidence say? All right. So we got this article called Marital Expectations Fulfillment and Its Relationship to Height of Marital Expectations, Optimism, and Relationship Self-Efficacy Among Married Couples. So yeah, married couples, but I think we can apply this to a lot of people, not necessarily married couples. So this is not an article per se. It's a thesis, and it's very interesting. So basically, they know that the height of expectations can affect marriages in a positive and negative way. They, they have the idea that the fulfillment of expectation is also detrimental if you do not get it. So she said, what about optimism in the individual? What about self-efficacy in the relationship? So she sat all those four variables and said, my end result is going to be marital satisfaction. So she interviewed a lot of people, basing her interviews on those four variables with the end result being marital satisfaction. And the first thing she said is, you know what? Optimism has nothing to do with this thing. Like, it doesn't matter if you're optimistic. If you're just optimistic, life is beautiful. The sun will rise every day through the same side and it's going to be shiny and not, not rainy. It doesn't matter. Like, you will be unhappy. You will have unfulfilled expectations. So optimism was out of the table. Now, of the rest of the variables, what she found was the following. First, height of expectations can affect a marriage in a very bad way, especially when the expectations are not fulfilled. Now, if these high expectations are fulfilled, that's going to be a butterfly of a marriage. What else happens? She says, the second thing she says is, more than the height of the expectation, fulfillment of expectations has a better impact of marital, satis marital satisfaction. So having your expectations met is more important than the height of themselves. But the last variable, she says, self-efficacy, that thing is the one you want to focus on. Because people who are self-efficient, they tend to have the perception and to fulfill more expectations than people who are not. And the end result of marital satisfaction is going to be improved. People would ask, what is self-efficacy? Me, myself, and you, we didn't know what that was until we read this thing. So self-efficacy, I don't know if we got the concept right, but it's a measure of how, not optimist, but how proactive you are towards your relationship like how much are you willing to invest in instead of just being a passive person who sees a problem in the relationship and just crosses its arms and says it'll work out or it's her responsibility to solve this problem the self-efficient person will say okay 
Um, why is she doing this? What are her possible motives? What can I do to solve the situations? How, what's my take in this thing? What have I done wrong? And we'll work towards solving the issue. So self-efficient people, because of that attitude, because of that introspect, will tend to fulfill more expectations because they are more conscious and more self-aware. At the same time, they have the perception that their expectations are being met and therefore have a better um, a marital satisfaction status when you go for that. So her conclusion is not only that, like that's a, that, those are the results. Her conclusion is shifting. The ideal thing would be for therapists to shift the, the approach in couples who are having issues with the expectations in their marriages to this, expectations, this expectation is too much. Let's lower it down, let's tone it down so that your couple can meet the expectation and go to these expectations are the ones your couple has. How can we make you a more self-efficient person with a self-efficacy mindset so that you can understand and meet that expectation? Of course, we're not talking here or touching those expectations that are just so surreal that, that they're not going to happen, you know, which is another topic and we are going to talk about them today too. So it's a very interesting thesis. You can find the link down in the description. So what do you think about that? So going back to her expectation, which <laughs> is very interesting. Um, so yeah, I didn't wake up. Now, at the same time, I was not waking up, not because I didn't want to, but because I just didn't hear the child crying. And it's interesting because I can hear a freaking mouse going under the door. We don't have mice in the house, by the way. But I can hear noises like horn, uh, a door crashing, steps on the freaking back staircase. I can hear that. But when Avril would be crying, I would not hear her. So whenever she would do like this to me, I would wake up. And sometimes I wouldn't. She would have to do it twice. So or three times, or four times, or five times. So you want to talk about the TED Talk? Yes. Um, she was so frustrated. She did research. To try to help me. I was extremely frustrated because it, it, it was a thing. I mean, I was ex I was exhausted. I could barely get myself out of bed at some point. And I'm like, oh my God, he's fresh. He, he, it, this is the same amount of energy he has all the time. So I'm like, he's all fresh and, fresh and sunshine. And I'm like dying here. What the freaking hell? Like, you know, if you have so much energy, you can invest it in taking care of the baby at night. And... Uh, this is where I started doing research and investigating why did he not hear the baby? I mean, how was it possible to not hear this child shrieking I had ear, in the room I next had door? Plugs. <laughs> shrieking in the room next door and not hear her. I mean, it's like to me it was unconceivable until I uh, did the research and found that there's actual biological reasons why mothers are. Uh, so prone to listen, even a change of the breathing in the child. Um, and it's a hormonal thing that uh, comes to affect chemistry in your brain and, and everything, um, which doesn't happen to a man because a man does not go through postpartum, does not go through pregnancy, breastfeeding, or the, the connection that comes from having a person growing in you for nine months. Um, but it's hard to understand because you're just exhausted and frustrated. We are going to share, and I was uh, telling you this a couple minutes earlier, we are going to share the, the, the video of the TED Talk. Um, she, she was a mother and she is a doctor and her thesis was actually on this and it's super interesting because she said, how did I turn into a stupid person after I had a child? So the interesting thing here, and, and it's so this just came to me and it's how looking at this from the self-efficiency perspective self-efficacy perspective yes i do understand your need I, I i will try to fulfill it please wake me up and you say why don't you wake why don't you wake up you jerk but then you as a self-efficacy efficient person say to yourself let me do some research you do the research you're like oh that's why he's not waking up so am i is my, is my being pissed with this guy because he's not waking up? And 
my dissatisfaction with my expectation not being met killing me so much? Or can I understand that he's not waking up because he's just a guy? A guy, and my little happy medium here is going to have to be regretfully smacking him on the ribs so he wakes up. And do you think that changed the way you felt so disappointed with me not fulfilling your expectations? It did. Sadly, at this point, it was like... It's kind of far. At the end <laughs> of uh, this uh, horrible waking up night wakes um, with Avril. But at some point, I didn't understand. And understanding is part of the process of even forgiving um, unfulfilled expectations, which uh, come to grow into grudges and hard feelings that kind of stay there like, yeah, I had a very rough year and a half when you were all cool and chill and you could go out and have some beers because you were cool and I could barely get my ass up. But we're cool. Right. I know you're not such a jack. <laughs> all right, it's time for the questions then. Let's do questions. So, we have our questions. You want to start? Yep. Okay. Understanding the concept presented by this study, which would you work first to become a better person and more satisfied in your marriage? To become a more satisfied person in my marriage. I think that um, analyzing all four var variables, I think self-efficacy is um, the one to work best. And with our example of uh, the night wakes, it, um, it worked well. Yeah. So I think it's the best way to go. Absolutely. All right. Do you understand that even with what we've talked, and I think you answered, well, I answered that for you, I'm sorry. Do you think that there are expectations that are just not going to be met, that are too surrealistic or unreal? I think that um, in this whole expectation talk and process, Step one is sit down, take a step back, analyze. Is my expectation real or not real? Like, can it actually be met by a human being or not? Like, sit down and analyze that. If it, like, if I'm expecting you to, I don't know, wake up every day with the baby and just, you know, I'm just going to fall asleep and you're just going to deal with the kid. I deal know? with them every day. It's your time to deal with them at night, right? Something like that. It's surreal because... I, I, it, the baby will at some point wake up because she's hungry and the baby was exclusively breastfed so I had to do it and she didn't take the bottle so I had to do it I mean that would have been an unreal expectation so yes I the first step analyze like these guys who ask their wives to have sex with them three times a day even though they both have full-time jobs Jesus. that's I'm sorry if, if whoever does it you guys are heroes but like I'm Respect. not saying I, I would like, I would love that. Respect. But three times a day with full with FTJs, full-time jobs, that's unreal. Like And kids. And kids. Yeah. That, that's, that could be tried, but then you would have to sneak out of work a lot. <laughs> and do it like with the kids around. Like, yeah, no. All but right. Anyway, All right, so. your turn. Okay. Um, so, my two questions, because... They're written down, but they're very far, and I can't see them. Um, first question. In a self-efficacy mindset, would you say, what? how, how do you think that you could work expectations? Okay, so as we have been talking about the topic, I understand, I understand that even though we have no idea of the self-efficacy concept, we actually handle ourselves that way maybe once one time more than others but i understand that when you know that it is effective being self-efficient is effective i think you would try to do analyze things more that way you would ask yourself more is this person doing this to hurt me and and you will find that the most of the times the answer is no and then you ask yourself what am i doing wrong how can i do better things to improve whatever issue we're having and knowing that it will make you more of a a person that's going to feel that his expectations are going to be met more often and will meet more expectations i think that self-efficiency or self-efficacy is the way to go just being aware that you are a member of this relationship 
being aware that you have responsibilities here too and that you can be a positive change if you decide to take action and not just be a passive bystander. So definitely, yeah. I really like the, the what you just said about um, uh, the intentions of uh, the other person. That's uh, like the get go. First step, what's the intention? Am I clear that the, that, there, that the other person has a good intention? If I am clear on that, then I'm gonna find a reason on why that person is acting out or doing whatever it is that I don't like. And I think that's a more problem solving mi mindset. True. So my second question and last question, the fourth of the complete set is, knowing, do you, are you aware of my expectations as your wife? Do you think they're real or unreal? Um, or meetable or not meetable? Uh, measurable. Measurable. No. Meetable. What? Are they oh, meetable. Um, yeah, I would say that I am pretty aware of most of your expectations. The times that I've had issues with them are, are the times that in which I have either not asked you appropriately which are them or you have not communicated them to me. So again, we come back to the same thing we talked about when we did the Spanish side of this. The main thing on expectations is making sure you let your partner know that you have these expectations. Because you can have a ton of expectations in your head, but if you never say them, don't expect me to fulfill them or to meet them because that ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna fulfill what I think you need, but not necessarily what you need is what you are expecting from me as your husband, as your partner. So. That is, I would say most of them I do, but, and I, I do say that your expectations, in my opinion, have never been unreal. Like, oh, this bitch be crazy. <laughs> no, I would not say that. Okay. Aww. Yeah. So we would definitely, sorry. Go ahead. We would definitely love to hear your answers on these four questions. Write to us, comment on the video, uh, send us a text message, Instagram, Facebook, just we want to hear from you. At least it's going to be sharing the TED Talk even with me because I have not. I finally have a way to say, Proof! I did not wake up. That's because I was an asshole. <laughs> but... Um, I'm an asshole, but not because of this. I'm an asshole, but because of this. It's, it's my, my, my biology. Genetics, you know. So again, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We are everywhere. Thank God if, if they approve us, we're going to be in Spotify with our podcast too. So you can also find us there. Remember, Apple Podcast, Podbean, and YouTube, and probably think if this happens, Spotify. Um, we'll Absolutely. Let you, we'll let you know on Infinity War next week. We will be posting follow-up articles and suggest strategic suggestions on how to deal with expectations in relationships. If you're gonna read this thing, I if you are familiar with evidence-based everything. Um, you can read the whole thing. It's dense, and the introduction is going to be very good because it's going to it's going to talk about how research has proved that expectations are good, but also bad, and it's good. So just if you're not familiar with this, just read the introduction. You're going to find the answers right there. All right. Thank you guys for watching us this week in our third episode. It is an honor to have you. See you soon. Sorry for the delay, and yeah, see you soon. Bye.